here we go hello 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 i already did this i thought i was live but i actually did not press go live so <laughs> hello everyone how how is everyone doing it's tuesday october 10th um yeah how how, how is everyone doing I feel like it's important to, oh, hi, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. My mom's back in Vegas. I miss her dearly. Also, she she really helps with um, Nova and Truth when I'm going live. And so, you know, without her here, we definitely notice she's not here. <laughs> Let me tell you that much. We definitely, definitely notice. Okay, good. You can hear me. You can see me. Hi, mom. How, hello everyone. It's it's so nice to see you all here. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining. And uh, hi, Annecy. Good day to you too. Good day to you too. I'm doing great. Look at, I'm at my office at work and I'm home relaxing. Curious to see what's going to be said about Feldman. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be learning along with you. Guys, today, I, I do know, um, you know, maybe the generalization of Corey Feldman, and I definitely know he's been extremely outspoken um, about the, the predators within Hollywood, and I do acknowledge that Corey Feldman is a survivor. And at the same time, there have been allegations against Corey Feldman that are extremely um, concerning. And so, you know, it's good to touch on this. I think it's important, especially in the survivor community, that, you know, just because somebody is a survivor, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they might uh, not perpetuate uh, the same type of abuse they experienced. It's actually sadly very, very uh, common, very common. And sometimes people get so traumatized and that trauma doesn't necessarily um, heal in the way that maybe it would for others. Like for me, I personally um, would never want to perpetuate the same type of um, ABUSC that I personally experienced in my lifetime. Um, that's, you know, that's me. And at the same time, though, I can definitely acknowledge that I know that there are survivors out there that have been ABUSED um, by someone who uh, is a survivor themselves. And it's important for us to acknowledge that. And sometimes these things aren't just black and white, black or white. There, there are these uh, between areas that get developed within through trauma and I think it's important for us to discuss that. Uh, it's really important for us too, because we don't want to just, you know, blindly act and say, oh, you know, for example, Corey Feldman has been uh, what I would uh, uh, see as an activist for uh, survivors. And I, I could never imagine him uh, doing something that would harm others. And I understand that stance because honestly, it's really hard to even process that possibility and as survivors it's 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 scary to think about someone within the survivor community uh possibly being you know an alleged predator themselves and this thing is very important for us um survivors and also allies to understand that uh both can be true, right? You know, someone can be a survivor and at the same time become somebody who uh uh harms others. And it doesn't negate and it doesn't um, devalue the trauma that that person experienced. Although at the same time, it's never an excuse, never, 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 never an excuse uh, to perpetuate um, the harms that have been inflicted upon us. And I think it's very important for us to note that and, and, and to recognize that. So, you know, we can, we can have our... our own opinions about these individuals and at the same time though we have to acknowledge that that there is a possibility that both can be true and I see this a lot to be quite honest with you um just within the survivor community in general during you know the the JDAH scenario um these tactics that I think are actually used by people that 
are are not to be trusted, where they try to divide survivors. And we do know the the typical stance with divide and conquer. And I really do believe that um, it works every time. Sadly, I think it's one of the easiest tactics in the book uh, to divide and conquer. And we are honestly so much more powerful all together. I really believe that we are better together. And when someone, when we feel that we're, we are being divided, which I think is a, a predator move of isolation, uh, to isolate each individual so that they no longer have a community and no longer actually have a force against the predator. Because, you know, you have to remember predators are always trying to find a way uh, to uh, basically create the create safety for themselves and dividing maybe a group of people that would actually be extremely powerful against them would be the first kind of a move to make because I do believe there are so many more survivors in this world than there are predators. But the reason why predators are able to be so mighty um, is because we are all so divided um, and they use that tactic of isolation uh, to be able to perpetuate their ABUSC. Um, let me see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, I do. The, I think, yes, the, or, the other Corey did. I, I think he's no longer alive. Always stronger together. And that's why I think, you know, especially I always like to say this in the chat is, yeah, we can have different opinions. Like, I think that's actually important to acknowledge that I don't think even our bestest of friends are necessarily going to have the same uh, stance or ideologies as we do. And we have to allow room for that because I think the more that we can get comfortable uh, having, um, you know, not always, there's some things that I don't really necessarily want to have a conversation about, especially if it's somebody who is uh, down with defending somebody who harms others. Um, that's, that's a hard conversation to have. And I'm not saying that I necessarily want to have that conversation, but Overall, I think it's important for us as a community of, of human beings to be able to discuss things uh, without dehumanizing, you know, each other. I think it's important for us to be able to um, kind of, even if you can't love each other through it, at least respect um, each other through it. Alleged dad. <laughs> Wait, who's an alleged dad? Feldman has no daughters. Is Feldman a dad? Corey Heim? Corey Heim, I think, is the... Yeah, 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 Corey Heim. And they were huge back in the day. Like, really, really... I mean, they were in... What was it called? License to Drive? That's, like, the one film I actually um, know about them. So, yeah, that being said, I just want, you know, everyone to... Acknowledge the fact that somebody can be a survivor and perpetuate the same harm um, that that has been afflicted upon them. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily at all negate the fact that, you know, that person is a survivor. And that's why sometimes I have a little bit of a hard time with um, believe survivors, even though it's like obviously I stand for believing survivors. And at the same time, I know that the predators really kind of like to use that um, uh, slogan, like or it's become like a hashtag as well, um, against us in, in the way where they'll try to find where the survivor has maybe lied in the past um, about something different, right? It could be about cheating on their boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or whatever, and they'll be like, well, because this person lied about this, like how can you believe them, you know, when they say this? And I've seen that argument happen a lot. And I've just gotten so tired of throwing these um, predators that that bone. Uh, and I also, I, I, I've kind of gotten over it as a survivor, constantly begging for people to believe me, you know. At some point, you know, it's not necessarily uh, um, just about that. It's it, it's about at least giving the power to survivors um, to, to feel strong enough and supported enough to tell their story, right? 
And that's what power to survivors like really means to me is that we're at least giving the power to the survivors to tell their stories safely um, and, and feel like they are supported within um, them coming public about their their truth. And then also if the survivor sees that there are any type of um, injustices that are happening within our justice system, for example, um, or in the, the criminal justice system, that we listen to them, you know, that, that we don't just uh, drown them out. And so power to survivors is about acknowledging the fact that survivors um, have a lot of wisdom and knowledge about being a survivor. And, and we need to uh, listen to them, <laughs> essentially. We need to listen to them. And also if they have some pointers on how to make it easier um, or, or, or safer, maybe not easier, but safer for other survivors to come forward, um, then we need to allow that because survivors uh, do know best you know, when it comes to these issues. A survivor is going to be somebody um, who knows uh, the, the, the pros and the cons um, about coming forward, the pros and the cons about going to the police, for example, the pros and the cons of going through um, a civil battle, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, power to survivors is, is that. It's like if you're not going to uh, believe survivors and that can be um, an, uh, a, a debate that you're willing to uh, have, then just at least acknowledge the fact that survivors should have the power though um, to feel safe enough to come forward um, about their trauma and also feel safe enough to report it and actually seek justice and then after seeking justice, get justice um, and also allowing survivors to choose how they want to come forward, right? And we see a lot of, um, sadly, a lot of discourse about that. Like, why didn't the survivor report? You know, why didn't they report um, the ABUSC, for example? Um, why did they choose to just do an open letter? And, you know, that that happens time and time again. And it's like the, the power to survivors is all about uh, allowing survivors to make that decision for themselves and allowing survivors to make that choice for themselves. And it's not going to look the same as another survivor, you know. And also there's um, there's things to acknowledge here. There's things to acknowledge where there's statutes in place that um, have expired for so many survivors and so sometimes the only option is an open letter or, or coming out publicly because they're not going to get um, any type of criminal, you know, justice. And so there are so many reasons as to why a survivor um, comes forward in the way in which they do. And I want survivors to feel powerful or to feel at least empowered about which choice they end up choosing. And so again, you know, Sure, I want people to believe survivors. And at the same time, though, if that's going to be a hard battle, um, you know, a hard uh, ask, sadly, then I would at least want us collectively to, to give survivors the power to make their own personal choices and to also listen to survivors when they have something to say about um, the pros and cons about coming forward. And so, yeah, that's a little bit of a spiel there. Um, but that's, that's, that's really what it means to me and, you know, power to the people. Um, and we all know what that means. And it's the same thing, you know, power to survivors. You know, if we can agree to power to the people, um, we can definitely understand power to survivors and, uh, and uh, what that means. Um, hi, kid. Oh, I hear Nova. Oh, pfft. There's at least one time in each live where Nova lets everybody know that she is not down with me being down here. I feel like that's <laughs> that at least happens at least once. Uh, but uh, does, that, does that make sense? I know everyone's like deep in the Corey uh, thing in the Corey Heim died of pneumonia after a long battle. I'm so sad. So sad. Yeah. And imagine how hard it was to come forward, you know, before, let's say, like, the Me Too movement, right? 
I mean, that was probably very, very rough. And also as a boy, right? Because there's so much stigma around uh, um, people that identify as a male, you know? And it really shouldn't be that way. And that's sadly because of the patriarchy. And I know that because I am, I identify as a female and, you know, I am a feminist. Um, there are a lot of people that think when I'm speaking out um, for survivors that I, 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 it's so strange. They think like, oh, that means I only believe, you know, survivors that identify as female. And that's just simply not true. And that's why I like to really say over and over again, survivors, you know, this is not a gender um thing here. This is survivors and and anyone can be sadly a survivor. And it's really sad because a lot of boys, a lot of men um, specifically uh, do not report um, what happened to them because of all of the stigma of the patriarchy around it. You know, like, oh, you didn't enjoy it and like blah, blah. It's horrible. I mean, I've heard this I was in a therapy group a while back and, you know, I, I, I came across, you know, um, male survivors and, you know, the, the saddest part of their story about coming, coming forward to either a family member or a friend um, were the bystanders kind of um, belittling it because of their, 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 their gender, you know. And I just want to make sure that we all know, like, E-Predators is not um, choosing a gender here. This is about survivors. And, and anyone can be a survivor. And it's really, really important for us um, to make sure that we never, ever create any type of stigma um, around any survivor that is coming forward. So when I think about Corey Feldman, for example, a lot of stigma there that I'm sure he personally experienced and um, I'm sure it was really hard. And then you put the power dynamics at play with Hollywood and uh, wow, right? And I personally experienced that you know, I, I I personally experienced that. I experienced that on the set um, of of Zoe 101, and I saw you know creepy behavior happening right before my eyes. And what do you do as a kid? Not only what do you do as a kid, but like what power do you really have um, up against a creator of a show, for example? What what power? You don't feel like you have much power uh, in that scenario. You really, really, really don't. You don't feel like you have much power in that scenario. What is everyone saying? Kylie, I was about to just say about that, about Terry Crews. Thanks, Mariah. It's all about protecting others. It is all about protecting others. Wendy Williams made fun of Terry Crews for talking about what happened to him. See, and this is survivors deal with it all the time. Um, humiliation, public humiliation, scrutiny. Um, and it's like, all right, okay, here's the deal. You might not believe this survivor, right? Okay. But are you being mindful about your actions when you speak about that? Are you being mindful of how that could harm the survivor? Are you being mindful of how that could silence other survivors from coming forward? Are you mindful about how it can silence that survivor that you don't believe, <laughs> You know, less stigma around being a survivor is the goal because the more that we can create more safety, just simple safety for someone to feel like they can come forward with safety, you know, then, you know, people can actually not feel, God, just unloved, <laughs> um, um, not, not supported. For example, there's two sides to Corey. He's nice in public, but not so nice in private. He left a nasty voicemail to one of his angels when she wouldn't go to the airport because he refused to pay her what was owed. Yeah. And so, you know, 
Another thing, another thing. I think when someone has experienced um, a lot of trauma, they're going to know the, uh, sadly, sadly, they are going to learn uh, the tactics that were used to um, keep someone in their in their grip. And so when someone is a trauma survivor, uh, abandonment, for example, is something that's going to be extremely, extremely triggering for a survivor. And if that if that trauma hasn't been properly, um, if the healing process of that trauma hasn't been properly exercised, then that person might actually um, impersonate and actually act on um, the ways in which their abuser has used on them to keep them isolated and keep them close. And not that that's a justification, but that can end up happening. That That is very possible. That can end up happening. Sorry if I'm in chat while I'm listening while working. No worries, Monty. It's so odd. Men and women both get ridiculed when they come out as a survivor, but the reaction is still so different. Why can't there just be compassion when a victim comes forward? Yeah, and I think it's because... Um, well, I mean, there, there's, there's so many different reasons that... Uh, not that they're justified, but there's so many different reasons that people claim um, as to why to not support uh, a, a victim. And I do honestly think, to be quite honest with you guys today, that I think a lot of people also are not at the point in their life uh, to recognize that they maybe are a survivor. And I think when they see another survivor coming forward, it can be also extremely uh, disorientating because like I like to say about e-predators, you know, there, there, there are many different types of survivors, right? There's um, SA survivors, there's cult survivors, um, there's system survivors, you know, you, the, the list goes on and on and on and on. Refugees, survivors, right? And then I even look at planet Earth, as a survivor, you know, and um, there, there's a lot of ways of looking at, at at survivors. And I think, again, with the divide and conquer, the more that we um, divide one another through what makes us a survivor is only going to be um, used against us, I think, in the long run. The more that we are divided as survivors, um, the, the, the harder it's going to be to to see some type of justice, to see some type of change. And I think if survivors start uniting with each other without it having to be a cult survivor, right, or an SA survivor, um, there's a huge, uh, I mean, I, you know, the word army is, you know, triggering for a lot of people. Um, but what I mean is, is that there are a lot more survivors than these predators. And if we stand together uh, as survivors, we have a very high chance of making change. And I really do believe that. We are absolutely better together. We absolutely are better together. And I just really, truly believe that. I really, really, truly believe that. And so it's time for us to, you know, as people, human beings, um, to come together. Should Oh yeah. Thanks mom. They all need a crash course in empathy 101. Yeah. I love, yeah. And that's one of the chants that, um, that's one of the chants that, you know, I do at the protest, which is survivors united will never be divided. Cause I know how scary that is for the predators, um, to hear it's like the, 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 the stronger we are together. And that's why it's very, very important for us to be very, very mindful about the predators um, tactics to divide us. They are going to try and do that so many times over. That is what a predator does. Divides, isolates, divides, isolates. And we as survivors need to make sure that we are always able to have a tough conversation with one another and respect one another and never dehumanize that individual in that conversation so that we can stay united and change the fucking world, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm being, I'm optimistic.
But I, I do think that, you know, we can change the world if we, if we really stay true to our, our, our unity, um, and, and not create a hierarchy out of it. And like Christian said in the chat recently, um, you know, horizontally, not, you know, vertically, you know, um, we can change the world. And I, I just really, really do believe that you guys. And you know, I'm, I could be optimistic and honestly, sometimes I'm not that optimistic, but I, I, I do have hope in that. I, I, I really, really do. And so I want survivors to be very mindful of these tactics. You know, they're, they're, they're honestly like old school, archaic war tactics, like just, and they work and they legit work because if we're constantly fighting each other, imagine this, if they get us to fight one another, then we're no longer going up against them because we're so distracted going up against one another. And that is, um, a, such a win-win for predators out there. It is such a win, win. And so, yeah, we can have our disagreements. That's not what I'm saying about, you know, uniting. Differences are going to occur. But do we let that get in the way of our common goal for justice and change um, and, and, and creating safety for survivors around the world um, to come forward? Got to keep our goal in mind, right? And not let the predators distract us from our common goal. Oh, hey, Jaden. If we didn't have the power to make change, they wouldn't have a reason to divide us. Exactly. Dividing us is the pure example. And it should give us actually the most inspiration that when we're unified, we're actually a problem. <laughs> Sorry, predators. We're a problem when we're united. And we totally caught on to that, by the way, um, because you're constantly trying to divide us. And why? Why are you constantly trying to divide us? And I'm sorry, but like really, truly that um, JDAH trial was full of that shit was honestly full of the division of survivors. And, you know, if anything, that that's what it did. Um, and it's so sad because I had survivors attacking me um, on my Instagram and it was just so sad to see. It's like we're survivors. Like, why would we ever want to trigger one another? Why? And also... Why are you saying that somebody's story now isn't true because they, they, they believe this person? That's why I'm saying with the Corey Feldman thing, it's very important for us to know just because we don't agree with a survivor, right? It doesn't mean that the survivor um, isn't telling the truth about their story. And for example, it doesn't mean if a survivor has lied in their lifetime about things. It doesn't mean that that survivor is lying about the trauma that they experience. It doesn't mean that. There is an and. There is an and and um, the predator loves an or. Predator loves the or because you have to make a choice. Just kind of like Scientology, right? Um, they're like, well, if you're not in Scientology, if you're an SP, if you're a suppressed person, um, then you know you can't talk. You know you can't talk to those people. Divide, 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 divide. Um, that person is your enemy. Divide, 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 divide. You know, divide, divide. Um, and it's, it's a tactic that works so many times. No victim of time should be silenced. No, I, I completely agree with you, Cody. Um, and that's why it's important to, to, um, do the work that we're all collectively doing. Um, that's why it's important. And I think the more we unify all survivors of all kinds, <laughs> Um, the more that we unify, we have a, a, a higher chance of um, taking it down. And, you know, even when you see, I, I think I said this last time, but when you see a predator, you know, in the wild, um, they try to isolate because the second that the whole herd um, actually comes together, they can actually intimidate that predator from, from getting that one victim. 
And so it's very important for predators to isolate and divide because that is how they get their prey. And it's not necessarily because there's some tough predator, um, right? Um, because they should be able to take on the whole herd. But usually, usually the predator does get um, defeated or feels that they are defeated the minute that they see uh, people coming in for the victim's, uh, at the victim's de- defense. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's my little spiel to, to begin. I, I, I wouldn't, how long have I been talking? <laughs> it's been a hard uh, weekend. I'm an emotional, emotional weekend. So uh, bear with me. These videos make me feel like I'm in Survivorship 101 class, but I love it. I feel very educated for a second. I know Survivorship 101. I don't know. Like this is, you know, these are... I'm hoping that maybe some like random person is listening out there that doesn't, you know, doesn't even understand um, all the injustices that survivors have to go through and they just happen to hop into the chat and like hear this and then like take it and like, I don't know, end up changing. That's like, that's my hope. That's my hope. Okay. So going into this before we go into all the Corey Feldman, all of Corey Feldman, um, we do not have a sponsor. <laughs> This is like my usual. We do not have a sponsor um, for this episode. And so these are the ways that you can support the channel and support um, the mission uh, that ePredators is on. And I want to always start it with thank you, everybody that's here today. Um, If you're a member, if you're a Patreon, if you bought a tote bag, if you're just, you know, you're just subscribing to YouTube. Um, and you're not a member, every single one of you, um, I'm so appreciative of, and, um, I'm so grateful. And so I just really want to start, you know, at each time like that, because all of you are, are, are just so wonderful. So here are some ways to support, <laughs> um, eat predators. So we got merch, obviously be well. Oh, welcome to the dinner party. Wait, is that? Is that Melissa? Oh my God, Melissa, are you here at the dinner party? Oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone say hi to Melissa. Okay, so um, here's a way to support um, is obviously our merch. Um, It's a great way, as I like to say, to kind of spread the awareness around it. It starts a conversation sometimes um, and just a great way of of sharing the message. being an ally for survivors. And so it, it, it goes to keeping this completely sustainable because, you know, I'm I'm not an actress uh, anymore and I have dedicated my life to this. So um, everything that makes this sustainable for me as a mom is extremely appreciated. And so, um, yeah. <laughs> so this is a way of supporting. And then we also have, if you're like, oh, wait, Oh, that's the Scientology. Oh, there we go. Um, if you're like, okay, fuck that. Like, I don't want any merch. Like, totally chill. Totally get it. Oh, Marissa, sponsored by Brian Friedman. <laughs> Marissa, you're amazing. Wait, that is incredible. Oh, my God, Christian. Welcome, welcome, Melissa. Um, and so if you're like, fuck the merch, um, you can also support by um, becoming a Patreon. And the Patreon goes towards the activism work that's behind me. Um protesting actively once a month that's what e-predators does i used to do it once a week but as a, a mom of two now i can only do it once a month and so um yeah we're out in the streets as well and that's a great way of supporting the actual physical uh, protests patreon um and so obviously becoming a member as well helps so those are the ways that you can um help make this sustainable for me and i appreciate power to survivors oh my god melissa i'm so happy to see you i'm so happy to see you yes and power to survivors 100 100 percent okay so the first thing that i also wanted to um all right here here we uh here we go so what we know about Corey is actually right here so he was saying that the biggest problem in hollywood is um pdf files 
And to be honest with you, um, coming from a uh, Nickelodeon show, I would have to say that, you know, um, he's not wrong there. He's not wrong there. Um, I actually definitely agree that that is um, a huge, huge problem with Hollywood in general is not only just PDF files, but also just essay in general and the cover up the 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 very very active um conscious um cover up uh of that and so Corey has been known as a brave uh a survivor who has come forward not only about the pdf files but also about the um kind of the essentially essentially the cover up of 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 hollywood right so let's look at this <sighs> um, at first, what's, oh, Nova, I, I heard you up there. Um, okay, let's see. So the 80s teen star is known for odd, even sleazy behavior. Is that why his claims about the film industry are not taken seriously? And here we go again. That's, I gotta like stop there for one second. This is why it's super, super, super important for, oh, Shay! Wish I could thank you for all you do. We are the ones who will change the world. I gotta go, but Survivors United. Shay, Survivors United, you're the best. Thank you so, so much crying right now thank you so much Shay you don't ever have to do that and thank you you're such an inspiration honestly um so that's the thing so you see how it starts with because he's uh sleazy right it started with that that you know is that why it's hard for him to believe that the film industry is full of x y and z that that needs to end no survivor is perfect no survivor is perfect no human being is perfect. And if we can at least acknowledge that, then why can't we acknowledge the fact that no survivor is perfect, right? We're human being survivors. We're, we're your friends, your family, your sister, your brother, your, you know, we're, we're human beings. We're, 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 we're not perfect. Um, and so very important and, and not to just acknowledge the fact that he is like coming off sleazy, whatever the fuck it means. Also, it shouldn't, negate the fact when we find out that he has been accused of certain things that that makes him also not believable about the film industry I want to um just say that 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 both exist so let's go into it okay so at first glance Corey Feldman's house looks ridiculous everything's ridiculous with Corey Feldman interesting a crooked Christmas wreath did I say that? <laughs> I never even have them. Hangs on the front door, even though it is late January. Oh, okay. Felt I have my decoration up past January. Like, what the fuck's a big deal? Feldman's assistant lets me into the two-story home in the hills of Los Angeles. And when I walk into the living room, I have to bite the insides of my cheeks to stop myself from gasping. Hanging above the fireplace is a drawing of Feldman from his 80s teen glory years. The bookcases are packed with vintage toys, but most still in their boxes, most from Feldman's old movies. There's Goonies merch, Gremlins memorabilia, the Lost Boys souvenirs, and of course there are the inevitable posters of his films. Okay, okay. So first, let's just let's just get there really quickly. You know, sound a little bit narcissistic. So I'm I'm getting the and you know, narcissism um can be a huge um, symptom of the exploitation of child stars. A lot of child stars can end up becoming adults that um, are narcissistic. And that is because of the exploitation of the children and children feeling like, you know, um, they're, they're maybe superior uh, to the other children around them. They get special attention. They're treated as adults. Um, and then you got, you know, if you're someone like Corey Feldman during the 80s, you got, you know, nowhere you could go without being recognized. Right? Nowhere you could go. Nowhere you could go without being recognized. And I remember the first time it happened to me getting recognized at a mall, Westfield Mall in Sherman Oaks. And I was like, it was so intense. And, you know, I, I, I just have never been that type of person to find that that was, I was like just kind of a little bit freaked out, to be honest with you guys. I remember being freaked out. Um, but if that becomes your day to day, you can have a false sense of reality. And I really believe 
that like celebrityism, for example, um, and Hollywood, Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood, um, you know, is um, they're just it's 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 out of touch a lot of the times. It's an extremely out of touch place to be, and I've been in and out of it um, throughout my lifetime, and. It's, it's, it, let's just say it's easy. It's easy to become narcissistic in that type of environment. Uh, and that's why the environment needs to change in my opinion. Um, and it also starts with not letting children be child actors in my personal opinion. There's a lot of things, but so we see Corey Feldman might have some signs of narcissism. This is not shocking though. This is honestly not shocking. So here we go. Let's see. What do we got here? So we got Lost Boys souvenirs. And of course, there are the inevitable posters of his films, including License to Drive and Stand By Me. All right. Feldman 48 eventually appears and he doesn't look much less absurd than his house. Interesting. This article is like kind of, I don't know. Do you guys feel that? Like it's kind of just kind of staging it as he should be somebody who's an unbelievable source, like someone to not be believed. Because he's ridiculous. And um, he's not any less absurd than his house, et cetera. Interesting. I just think the journalist is very interesting with this. All right. It's hot outside, but he is in lavishly patterned shirt, a waistcoat and suit trousers. He still has the thin lipped wide grin that made him so recognizable as a child actor, but set alongside his skinny build. It now emphasizes his jagged cracked appearance, but he's very salacious, making sure I have a drink that I'm comfortable on the sofa, even though he's having a terrible day. We'll get to that. But first I have to ask, doesn't he find having all these old toys around him a bit, well, depressing? He goes, no, not at all. The experiences that were bad weren't working on gremlins or goonies. This is all the fun stuff. Okay. He's hugging close to the wall. Let's Okay. So here he goes. All right. So back in the mid to late 80s, Feldman was known for being one of the most popular teen pinups in the world. He and his fellow child actor, Corey Heim, best friends and frequent co-stars, were known as the two Corys. Girls covered their school books and Corey stickers, called up the Corys cash and phone lines, stood outside their home screaming. Those days are long gone, and now Feldman is better known for something else. After Hyam is no longer alive, at the age of 38 in 2010 of pneumonia, after years of painfully public substance addiction, Feldman spoke out about the SA he and Hyam suffered in the film industry. The biggest problem in Hollywood, he repeats, mantra-like, is PDF file. His fellow former child actor, Alison Arngrim, has said, I literally heard that the two Corys were passed around. The word wa was they were given D-R-U-G-S and being used for S-E-X. This is horrible and super common. <sighs> According to Feldman, Hayam was arred by a major Hollywood figure while making the 1986 film Lucas. Reviewing that film, Roger Ebert predicted that Hayam would grow into an important actor. He is that good. He was. But instead, he became a bloated and bankrupt shell of a man. It's kind of a sad thing to say there. Forrest in later years to appear on reality TV shows in which he was so out of it, he hardly knew where he was. And this is, you know what? I hate that they, they fucking talk like this. Jur like, who is this journalist, by the way? Listen, coming out of being a child star alive is, is uh, a miracle, okay? It's a miracle. It's, it's legit a miracle. You got PDF files around. You got people exploiting you. You got people um, using, uh, not really obeying the labor laws, in my opinion. Um, it's horrific, honestly. And obviously, there's sometimes where it's a lot chiller than other people's stories. But then some families end up stealing money from the kid. I mean, there is so many things up against you as a child star. Um, it's very hard to to come out of that. What's the word I want to use? Perfectly okay? Like, and should that be expected? Uh, I, I, this journalist is really painting it. And I, I'm not even saying, I'm not like pro Corey here. It's like, but still, dude, let's like be a little bit more mindful how we're, how we're talking about child stars and, and without the context and without the trauma informed knowledge 
of what goes into a person um, becoming this wounded, right? Becoming a wounded uh, uh, individual. So that's PDF file mean in this context. PDF file is kind of what it sounds like. P-E-D-O. P-E-D-O. Okay. Let's see. According to Feldman, Hayam, okay, got that. He made me promise before he was no longer alive that I would get the truth out, says Feldman. It would be an understatement to say this has become a crusade for him, much to the dismay of Hayam's mother, Judy, who agrees her son was A-B-U-S-E-D, but says Feldman is exploiting his memory. Interesting. Today, Feldman is pacing around his house anxiously because his long-promised documentary, which he wrote, directed, and financed, is likely to be delayed yet again because of a problem with the insurance. It is provisionally titled Truth, the R of the Two Corys. Feldman says he not only names his and Heim's abusers after almost a decade of hints and promises, but also taps into what he insists is a conspiracy to protect them. The fact that he can't get his film out in his eyes, proof of this, nobody wants to go after the bad guys. I mean, here we go. So he, he's saying something that we agree with, right? And it's true. I will stand right next with to him in this situation and say, yeah, no one does want to go after the bad guys. That happens throughout history. That is the common um, common stance, honestly. And so I don't. I honestly do not disagree with him uh, at all there. <sighs> okay, so he says that he shows me emails from lawyers denying him access to police reports and video footage. What the hell is really going on here, he asks. It must drive you crazy with frustration, I say. Do I look crazy? He asks, eyes blazing. The truth is surrounded by his toys, raging about deep, dangerous conspiracies. Yes, he absolutely does. But Harvey Weinstein hired ex Mossad agents to discredit hired ex Mossad Mossad. I, I don't know how to say it. Discredit journalists who were investigating him and women who accused him of the R word. So crazy can sometimes be the truth. This journalist is so weird. So crazy can sometimes be the truth. What do you mean crazy can sometimes be the truth? Yeah. How this has been happening forever, by the way. Cover up of SA is the main one of the main issues here. And that's why, like, you know, that's what E Predator is about. The institutions that are covering up SA. Because if these predators don't have a fucking safe space to continue to perpetuate the ABUSE and get access to more victims, because most institutions are actual ways to get access to more victims, the less cover up there, the less cover up that's happening, that's when change, we're going to actually see change. It's the cover up, the cover up, the cover up, the cover up, the cover up. And this isn't some crazy fucking concept. You know, the cover up's been happening throughout history. That's what bad guys fucking do. <laughs> That's how bad guys get away with things for so long. It's like, oh, how did this happen for like 20 plus years? And, you know, because they were covering it up and look at Scientology. They were covering it up. Sorry, sometimes I get like angry about that because it's like sometimes crazy things can happen. It's not crazy. It's literally the day to day. It's business per usual. I'll put it that way. It's business per usual. Predators love covering up shit. They love getting people to cover up shit for them. They like manipulating people into being bystanders that just turn a blind eye so they can cover it up. The list goes on and on and on and on. So I, I mean, I'm not shocked by this with Corey. This happens all the time. But crazy, crazy can sometimes be the truth. Like, and I guess, whatever, dude. Um, Feldman was born and raised just outside Los Angeles, the son of a largely absent musician father and a former Playboy Club waitress. According to him, his parents looked at their baby, saw a potential money-making machine, sad, and sent him to auditions from the age of three. His mother peroxide his hair when he was four and put him on diet pills just a few years later to improve his chances of getting roles. Feldman legally emancipated himself from his parents when he was a teenager, just as Drew Barrymore and later Macaulay Culkin later did too. The history of child stars and their parents is rarely a happy one. Very rarely. I wonder why. I wonder why it's rarely a happy one. 
Feldman works steadily progressing from adverts to sitcoms and finally movies. He says he loved being on set with other kids and the chance to get away from what he describes as his miserable home life and occasionally violent parents. I mean, this is this is a sad reality. This is like a very sad, like sad reality. And and it seems like, you know, he he's been trying to speak out and, you know, it, it's it's pretty much impossible, right? It's really, really hard to come forward about something that Hollywood is complicit in. Hollywood in its entirety. Like Scientology. I would actually like to put um, Scientology and Hollywood together in this. Right? It's it, Hollywood in its entirety covers up tons of abuses um, in the name of, of, of profit. In the name of profit. And that's that's what Hollywood does. And it will go by any means necessary, in my opinion, to uh, not only perpetuate it and also cover it up. It's, just, it's fucking sad. So very curious, honestly, to see this documentary of his because I've heard through the grapevine about, you know, who these ABUSERs are. And let's just say they are huge. Um, allegedly, these are huge executive, you know, types of people. And I think it's important for um, the public to understand that it doesn't just happen from co-stars, um, right? And et cetera, et cetera. It's happening on an executive level. And that's why I like to constantly explain that, that, you know, these pred the predatory behavior that's being covered up is being covered up by predatory behavior at, at the top. So you got, you got a couple main predators on the top um, and it starts to trickle down and then they're protecting the predators underneath them. And it doesn't mean that the predators on the top are nece necessarily SA survive, I mean, um, predators, but they're predators nonetheless, and so they protect any type of predatory behavior. They don't have sympathy um, for human life. It's not something that predators have. Predators have no sympathy for human life at all. Um, and so that's how the cover-up usually happens. And it happens, you know, with, with uh, tactics like this a lot of the time. NDA, NDA, NDA. So let's go into, though, what Corey has been accused of. And this is pretty heartbreaking. I got a lot of messages recently from um, alleged uh, friends of the victims. And, um, you know, guys, the story go runs allegedly a lot deeper and is is, is deeply ho horrific, honestly. From wh what I heard um, was disturbing and very, very scary. Um, these are allegations. I like to stress that, obviously. Um, and though the, the allegations that I did hear are, are, are awful. And I, I stand with the, the, the survivors. Uh, I want them to feel safe to come forward. And I just want to, um, acknowledge them in this, uh, episode and let them know that they have uh, support here at, at E Predators. Let's go into the, the allegations. Let's begin. God, I'm, okay, here we go. Here he is. Um, a number of women have recently come forward to openly accuse former child actor Corey Feldman of R and abuse, including physical and SA. The worst criminals are those who hide in plain sight to perpetuate evil on their unsuspecting victims. The ability to perpetuate a facade which insulates the predator from blame and public scrutiny is what empowers many abusers to maintain a strange hold on their victims while reeling more innocence into their unhealthy circle. Couldn't have said it better. The former 80s child star has and continues to be very vocal against SA and pedophile in Hollywood threatening to tear down the veil and expose the hard taskmasters who are taking advantage of vulnerable people within the entertainment industry. While Feldman displays himself as an advocate, gearing up to fight for those who have been assaulted and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars in the name of the cause, okay, we're gonna have to look into that, through various platforms, he is said to be secretly assaulting and inflicting the same injuries that were inflicted on him 
on to others. In other words, the abused has allegedly become the abuser. These claims are especially damning when viewed against the backdrop of Feldman's well-publicized intentions to expose SPs, so S-E-X-U-A-L, predators, in Hollywood through his documentary film, My Truth, An R of Two Corys. The documentary follows Corey Feldman, who presents allegations that himself and the late actor Corey Haim, who passed away 2010, were both s aid by Hollywood moguls. Hollywood moguls, you guys. I'm very interested to hear who these Hollywood moguls are. The highly anticipated documentary seemed to many to be a greatly exaggerated money grab. Yeah, because survivors are never allowed to... Um, uh, survive (laughs) survivors are never allowed to survive you know that's something I get really upset about like that happens to me sometimes with this work right because I will see like some people in like a YouTube comment or whatever you know say like you know this person's just trying to get relevant and like they're just trying and it's like you know what it's really sad to hear that you um view survivors that way that you know that survivors can't um um, um, feel supported, uh, even financially to do work, um, to create safety. You know, it's like this really weird thing where bad guys are allowed to, bad guys are allowed to make money and do evil things, but good guys can't do good things and, and, and live a life that's sustainable. Right. And I really, I really want us to be mindful of that. You know, like it shouldn't just be bad guys, (laughs) that are allowed to 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 make money doing bad things, right? We should allow people to do advocacy work and have a sustainable life. You know, not like an expense, not like a rich man's life, but just like a life where they feel supported by their actions to do advocacy work. Advocacy work should not put you in the gutter. And I think predators actually want um, people to not be able to do advocacy work because it's not sustainable. And also advocacy work takes a lot of time and energy and it would take a lot of time and energy away from your job um, and job is a is means of survival. And so, you know, if you're taking time away from your job to do advocacy work, it, 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 it's hard. Um, you're not you're not it's going to be very, very difficult to continue to do the advocacy work. And I think predators really love um, good guys not um, getting support, not getting support for further good deeds. And I know it's a kind of like controversial like thing, but it shouldn't be like if it's so acceptable that bad guys are doing bad, horrible things in bad faith, making billions of dollars, like billionaires should be an end to billionaires. I like to like call my little kids like babies against billionaires. I have like a little, we have a little song um, for babies against billionaires, but billionaires shouldn't even fucking exist in my opinion. Um, So I don't like the billionaire thing. But if they're existing, you know, it's not okay for for somebody to feel supported doing advocacy work. I'm sorry, I have a I have a problem with that, and and survivors really constantly get blamed for that. It's either they came forward to get the money from their um, predator, or they came forward to get attention, and it's just all this victim blaming, man. And it's 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 really getting fucking old. And I think that we should be allowed. Good people should be allowed to do advocacy work and 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 feel like they they can change the world and put all their time and energy to that and get support um, from their community. I really don't see that that now if they're you know abusing that support, that's fucking different, obviously. You know, but but why? Why can't survivors um, why can't survivors succeed in doing good things? What's 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 that about? What's the stigma around survivors succeeding? I don't know. What? Because they're going to become threatening. (laughs) That's what I think it is, because if all good people felt that it could be sustainable for them to do good things, what would that become? They want people to feel guilty. You can't do good things in honest, you know, in earnest or whatever, um, and uh, um, have a sustainable life doing it. Why not? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Just kind of saying, why? Why? (laughs) Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry, I went on a little rant there. But you know what I mean? I just I see it in this article. It's like the same thing. Money grabbing, et cetera. And that, you know, I'm not saying it's not necessarily true. I'm just saying I hear that all the time. Okay, so um, um, profiting from CA by simply repeating claims published within the National Enquirer in 2017. These claims were made to the Enquirer by none other than now deceased actor and longtime friend of Corey Feldman, Dominic Br- Brassia? Brassia? Horrible last names, you guys. Who has been identified as Corey Himes, um, A-B-U-S-E-R, by both Corey Hyam, Mother Judy, and Corey Feldman himself. According to public record, Feldman and Brescia were also roommates over the span of five years, sharing a residency of, at Feldman's former Encino, California home from 1994 to 1999. So here we go. Public records. We see Dominic. We see Corey. Okay. A number of women have now openly accused Corey Feldman of R, SA, and harassment and physical assault. Although some of the allegations of ABUSC and questionable SB have been circulating on social media for the past decade, they were recently exposed and vocalized by Mindy Robinson, a conservative activist, political commentator, and actress who had previously been a friend and close associate of Feldman. On June 16th, 2020, Mindy Robinson published an open editorial titled Corey Feldman is an S predator. Former angels speak out to lend weight to some of these accusations. He demanded I had to wear white if we hung out or did an event, which was weird, but whatever. Then he started demanding that I couldn't eat meat in front of him. I mean, you can't make this shit up. Sorry, right away. I'm just like, this is so fucking weird that doubt this is made up. Um, he had actually invited me to dinner, but then refused to allow me to order anything with meat because he was vegan and found it offensive, which was the last time I agreed to ever take him on uh, up on dinner. According to her, Corey Feldman not only destroyed the lives of women who were around him, he wanted to control everything, the way they dress, the things they eat, and the way they live their lives. As stated by Robinson, the icing on the cake is the D-R-U-G-S he lures women do with him so that he can take advantage of their vulnerable condition and have S-E-X with them. Okay, so it's getting here, you guys. She also mentions an incident where she was invited to Feldman's birthday party and upon her arrival was told that she either had to pay for her entry or strip down to her bra and thong okay she also revealed that she later found out feldman was having unprotected sex with women and says to have cared for one woman who was sick from the drugs and alcohol he had given her mindy stated i held her hair while she cried and threw up while Corey stomped around angry because she wouldn't have sex with him Wow, Corey stomped around, allegedly, angry because she wouldn't have SEX with him. What do we think about that, chat? What, 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 what do we, it's a little bit of a culty vibe. I get that too. Like the photos on the internet are pretty uh, uh, wild. What, what are, what's the take so far? Sounds like he was trying to pressure them to doing things that they couldn't even do because they were... Uh, allegedly throwing up at the time just a little temper tantrum you know disgusting let's continue disgusting she says Feldman had also given a girl a bladder infection (laughs) Corey liked using his celebrity status to reel in young usually out of town naive girls but it turns out he also convinced them that a makeup sponge dipped in a questionable Spermicide he bought from China would protect them from every disease in the world, including AIDS, Mindy wrote. Wow. Can I read that one more time? It doesn't get any wilder than this, you guys. Like, what is this? Corey liked using his celebrity status to reel in young, usually out of town, naive girls. But it turns out he also convinced them that a makeup sponge dipped in a questionable spermicide he bought from China would protect them from every disease 
in the world. I mean, you really can't make this up. This is like really, uh, uh, this is fucking, what the fuck is this, guys? I mean, what the fuck is this? What, what, what is, what's happening? What's happening? This is so wild that you're like, I just don't personally think you can, you know, in my opinion, I don't know if you're, you're making this up. It's a little too specific. Never heard of, never even heard of such a thing. Um, and, uh, I need a stronger drink. Yeah. I'm like sipping right now. I'm like, this is a little, holy shit. This is bad. This is real, real, real bad. All right, let's continue. God. Okay. The fuck? Adding Corey, Corey Feldman is a manipulative, emotional bully and takes advantage of everyone he knows. Okay. I very well believe that he himself was a victim of SA. I'm glad she acknowledged that. But that does not give him the right to SV women all the while pretending to fight Hollywood predators. Make no mistake, Corey Feldman is a S predator of the worst kind. Of the worst kind, you guys. Of the worst kind. Here it is. Oh, shit. This is it. Here it is. Folks, safe SEX in a bottle with these two chemicals. Oh, my God. Here's Corey Feldman tweeting it. With these two chemicals, we can rid the world's risk of STDs. The truth is out there. This thing just says it's a women's way to prevent fucking pregnancy. What the fuck is he talking about? Wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Why is he saying that this... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind here, you guys. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? It's just the woman's way to prevent pregnancy. And he's saying we can rid the world's risk of ST. This is out of control. This is from like 1983. Yeah, this bottle looks super ancient, by the way. Oh, no. I hear Nova upstairs. This is unhinged. This is insane. Okay, sorry. I heard Nova, my poor husband up there. Mindy was not only brave enough to speak for herself, but also shared the letters of several women who said they were harassed and abused by Feldman in their career. So far, eight women, eight, you guys, eight. Here we got eight. Because, you know, they love to say, like, is, are there more? <laughs> yeah, well, we got eight women here. Eight women have spoken out as victims and witnesses of Corey Feldman's alleged S-E-X-U-A-L, emotional, mental, and physical abuse. Some of them have worked in very close proximity with Feldman or have been a part of Corey Feldman's former band, Corey's Angels, which by the way, can, wait, you guys, let me, can I pull up Corey's Angels really quickly? Hold on. I got to I got to pull this up. Corey's Angels. It's out of control. Like the photos of Corey, Corey's Angels is just like legit. It's out there. Hold on. Let me pull it up. Look at this. This is Corey Feldman. Um, this girl looks very young right here, by the way. Um, but this is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, it seems like he thinks he's like a, a Burning Man version of um, Hugh Hefner. I think he's like going for the, you know what I mean? Like Burning Man version of Hugh Hefner. I mean, essentially, that's what I'm seeing here. Wow, look at him here. What is he wearing? You know, all right. But something about it feels, here's him as Batman, I guess. Something about this, though, doesn't feel, um, I don't know, you guys. Something about this is a little bit unsettling. I, I feel unsettled by whatever is happening here. I don't necessarily get the best vibe. Um, so at least you can see Corey and his uh, angels to get at least um, an example of what they're talking about here. Mara Moon, a singer and songwriter who was part of Feldman's 2017 tour, said she was subjected to emotional ABUSC because she refused 
to Fel- um, Feldman sec- uh, S-E-X-U-A-L advances. She was forced to watch his orgies, D-R-U-G use, and abusive behavior in general. I was supposed to be paid that Monday. I never got paid for one single day of work on top of S-H and hunger and RV danger. Who wants to continue working a tour, loading equipment, losing sleep? That Tuesday, I quit. I was done being degraded and used for free labor. That's an exact tweet from Mara Moon. Jacqueline Von Rudin, also known as Jezebel Sweet, one of the Corey Feldman's former band members from the spring and summer tours of 2017, claims that Feldman and his wife, Courtney Ann Mitchell, now Courtney Feldman, former Canadian Beach Bunnies spa escort, were both fond of group SEX parties and often lured newcomers to participate in group SEX with them. She also filed a police report on Feldman for <gasps> S-E-X-U-A-L battery. Wow. Police reports are now involved, you guys. Um, there were several times at his home or on tour where he grabbed at my butt or I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this on, on YouTube. This area says Von Rudin. She also mentions a specific night when she says she witnessed Feldman, S-O-D-O-M-I-Z-E, an unnamed girl. Oh, God. This is horrible, man. Hold on. I need to just take a second because that's what happened to me with my my um, predator, and I just want to take like a... This is horrible. I I didn't know that this was, um, this is horrible. Why aren't people um, talking about this more? And, you know, I have to say something and fuck, I don't know if I should say it. I don't want to say it and like cause any, um, should I say it? I don't even want to, I don't know sometimes. I don't know if I should say it, but I, I feel like I should say it. Um, I think that young looking girl was Kansas Bowling, who would have been, I think, 19 or 20 in that pick. So, yeah, this is straight up evil, you guys. Um, you know, OK, I'm going to say it and I and I and I think it's OK to um, say this. And this is nothing against this individual. But I do think it's important for um, me to say it. Okay. Say it. Everyone's saying say it. Okay. So, you know, Chrissy Carlson Romano um, had him on her on her show, on, on, on a podcast that she calls the Vulnerable Podcast. And um, when I saw it, I, I was already aware of... Um, the accusations against Corey Feldman and as a survivor being on her show as a survivor being on her show I um was a little bit shocked about that I was honestly it was even like a flirtatious thing on a reel um that was triggering it was like I like imagined if I saw somebody that I thought was advocating for others, you know, um, like flirt or pretend to flirt with um, my predator. And it was jarring for me. And I found it to be um, just deeply unsettling, like deeply unsettling. And I ended up getting multiple messages from um, an individual that was very close to the uh, survivors. And apparently they had reached out. Um, I, I have to say it. I have to say it. I have to say it. They, they reached out and um, wanted that video to be taken down. They wanted... They wanted the video to be taken down. And and I understand why. Um, Now that I'm reading this and I haven't even finished the article, um, I understand why a survivor, we have it all the time. I have so many friends and I've been in that situation where I just don't want to see my predator. You know, I don't want to hear him in a yoga studio. I don't want to hear him. I don't want to see him. 
I don't think that's malicious. It's um, a trauma response. And I think it's a very valid one to not want to see the person who has harmed you. And you don't want to see people that you like even, you know, um, support them. Because you feel the one, you feel unsupported. And um, you don't feel valued or respected as a human being. And, um, yeah, so uh, I guess they reached out to um, Christy. And you have to remember I was on Christy's, um, I was on Christy Romano's podcast. And um, I, 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 I spoke about my experiences with Nickelodeon and as a survivor. And I let her know about Eat Predators. Um, and I trusted the platform. And I'm not saying I don't. But I trusted the platform as a survivor. And then I had to hear that this person has been reaching out to Christy, asking for that video to not um, really exist because it was triggering for them and hurtful. And they just wanted to be heard. And um, I just thought that was fucked up. So I reached out to Christy Romano myself. And um, I asked her that and said, here's the phone number to these people. I don't even know why. I'm like so emotional right now. It's been a hard weekend. I feel like sometimes this this weekend's been like kind of, like we all know it's been an emotional weekend for many reasons. Um, but um, so, so I reached out to Christy Romano and I told her that this person would like to, you know, talk to her and um, at least hear what she has to say. And, you know, letting, letting her know that the survivors um, would like it taken down. She never did anything. She left the girl on red. What happened? Oh, no. God, okay, I'm back. Um, Nova unplugged the modem and um, everything got shut down. She's um, rebellious. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, no, Nova was like, listen, if you're not going to come up already, I will take these matters into my own hands. Um, yeah, Nova's, I love, I love Nova. So back to what I was saying. So Chrissy Carlson Romano, and this is, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I just have to say this because it's very important to understand these things that happen. And I don't, I don't feel honestly um, too bad about saying this because I think it should be spoken about. So I reached out to her and I told her all of this and um, she did say that she left the girl on red and did not honestly know what to do. All right. I think something I have to go look at the messages. Um, but I don't know. Maybe you guys can go see for yourself. Um, you guys can probably go see for yourself that that video is probably still up, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. It's 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 unfortunate. And now I'm reading this, and I sent her. I think I sent her this article. Like I'm. I'm like pretty positive I sent her this article and now that I am fully reading it here with you guys I can say that this is kind of concerning like um Alexa Christie put who Christie put Todrick Hall on her podcast who is an alleged abuser and ignored people calling her out for it who is Todrick Hall this is not good and it's just really sad for the survivors, right? And apparently not many people have done a video about Corey. And it's something that's not, it doesn't happen. Um, and survivors have been wanting people to to speak about this, right? And um, I understand. Um, but what I really have a hard time understanding is like, 
you know, you know, you say you're an ally for survivors. You, 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 you had me on your podcast and I explained to you deeply the struggles of a survivor, et cetera. Um, and you know, when survivors are reaching out to you and saying like, Hey, I really like you. And I'm sad that, that I, I don't want to see my, the person who harmed me being supported by somebody who, um, I respect, right? Or I, I, I look up to, or I want to look up to, like, I, I want to, I like listening to this person, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, please put it in the Reddit, um, Annecy. I, I do want to look into that. Um, you know, and so, yeah, and I had some problems, obviously, with the Ned's Declassified podcast. There were some things that I was very hurt by and things that have happened in the past. And, you know, Chrissy was actually very, um, mindful and and sweet to me about those things um but you know at the same time i think it's important for survivors not to feel um silenced by the fact that certain things are happening and that they, they don't stand with it and i and i would appreciate christy to obviously read this article that i sent her fully and make a um a decision if she wants to continue to because I'm guessing that video is monetized, right? And it's like, do you want to be... Mm, and la, 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 la. I don't know. God, I can't. I don't, personally. After reading some of this stuff from Corey, I, I honestly do not um, want to make any money off Corey Feldman. Like that. Like I, Unless I'm like speaking about the things here, like bringing awareness. Like I'm obviously on YouTube right now. But I don't want it to be like a... Wee! Corey like flirtatious video like like okay anyways I, I said too much I'm, I'm moving on moving on moving on okay this happened while on tour in New York City I tried to go back to the tour bus with the other girls after our show but he yelled at me and said I had to go with him because it was his birthday we had a party at his hotel suite some of the girls left and then Corey had SEX with the ones who stayed besides myself and one girl who was there with her boyfriend who only had SEX with him while he watched okay okay um, eventually that couple left too. One of the other girls had told Corey earlier in the day that she was going to have, okay, SEX with him as a gift for his birthday. She had never done it before. And when he told her he wanted to do it, she said no, because she was scared and she changed her mind. Okay. His wife, Courtney, started screaming at the girl, saying that she had to do it because she already said she would. You guys, what the fuck? But Corey didn't care and he forced himself on her. Okay. His wife was touching me and kept saying, isn't that so hot while he arred her? You guys, this is fucking, I can't. Is it? I can't. I had done so much MDMA and um, um, ketamine that I was physically ill. I felt freezing cold and I couldn't move or speak. Guys, this is really trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. This is the girl who claimed I grabbed her butt once. Wrong again, Corey Feldman. Here's my police report. You SA'd me multiple times and I wouldn't have even reported it had you not committed R in front of me after giving me a huge dose of K-E-T-A-M-I-N-E. So there's a police report. So we got a police report going on. According to her, Feldman somehow still managed to keep his angelic image in the eyes of the girls, which he used to calm his lust. Based on allegations made on several posts on The Dirty, Courtney Feldman has been accused of similar behavior with her then-boyfriend, Lindsay Shamlick. I don't know if that's... I'm saying it. Poena Zerdarth, a costume designer and musician who worked with Corey Feldman in 2016 and 2017, revealed that Feldman not only used women for SEX, but also robbed them of their their hard work. She speaks about how he used the costumes as she made for him without ever paying her. Notice the tiny M my above truth because it's not the truth it's just his delusion delusion he made up to scam hard-working americans out of their money 
Wow. Wow, that's wild. As long as you're listening to him and dancing on his signals, you're acceptable. But the moment you start making your own decisions, he kicks you out of his group and he uses your belongings without your permission. Hashtag Corey Feldman isn't satisfied with victim shaming. He has to post photos of a young woman coming out against him to punish her like he he has threatened other girls in the past. If they talk, he brags no victims have come forward. They are terrified and traumatized. So we howl for them. She also narrated her firsthand experience and stated that all the donations which Corey collected to help him fight S.A. were redirected to his own personal purse and to fund his needs. Margot Lane, music director and bandmate who worked on the spring and summer tours with Corey Feldman, spoke of the artist's habit of slipping women unsuspecting D-R-U-G-S, which paints the picture of a possible S.A. while in the state of in This is like I'm like getting triggered inebriation. This is like this is pretty um, what's how's the chat feeling? I'm just want to see this is so horrific i've been late have i been late for long no no but also i didn't think anyone would make me want to this is just wait what's going on here but also i didn't think anything would make me want to like change the subject to like hey so how about this I know. I know. I'm like a little bit. Um, this is really heavy. OK, so this is trigger warning, trigger warning again as we as we continue. OK, so she also filed a complaint with the California Labor Commissioner's Office for unpaid wages and penalties and was deemed by the court to be owed over seven thousand dollars. Here's the video here. Chantel uh, Knippenberg, Knippenberg, God, me with last names, you guys, calls Feldman a um, S predator, saying that she saw him being inappropriate with underage girls. During the first week of June 2020, Chantel came forward and claimed to have proof from both former child actors, Jamison Newlander, the other frog brother in the film Lost Boys, and Corey Feldman that showed before the brand Corey Angels was created, Feldman had attempted to launch a talent agency for young women. The first step in the audition process was for these young girls to take and send pictures of themselves for Feldman to approve before making contact with any of them. The pictures would be sent to a woman by the name of Nicole Howell who would then decide which should be forwarded on. Chantel stated in her interview that many of the pictures that came through were disturbing to see. There were many pictures of young girls dressed in lingerie, leaving very little to the imagination. It is unclear that Feldman did what Feldman did with those pictures once he had received them. But as Chantel would later go on to claim, there were instances where Corey Feldman would feed DRUGS to minor girls and proceed to ABUSE them. She says Jamison Newlander not only knew of this happening, but has seen these things for himself. He has remained silent and in full support of Feldman. Okay. All right. Maybe these will help. Corey Feldman wife swap. What is this? From your pics, you are beautiful. Let's see bikini pic to decide. Achieving supersonic warrior. Like I said, I just want to say that I see you, I hear you, and I believe you. And for all the other survivors, I believe y'all too. Oh, supersonic warrior 93. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. It means, it means honestly, the world, obviously. Thank you so, so, so much. I see you. <sighs> okay, you guys. Um, both hot, presumably underage. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's, uh, I guess, open this up. What is this? At cut for Courtney. Um, you are both hot. Both presumably underage. So let's just say you are both cute. Okay. Wait, what the fuck? 
Wait, wait, did no one see this this whole time? Oh my God, you guys, I'm so sorry. Dude, do you, look at this. Can you guys see this now? Sasha, you didn't know what's going on. Wait, this is, there's just so much to digest. I mean, this is actually wild, you guys. Did he really tweet this? Of course, I'm like, is this an alleged tweet? So he's not an alleged dad, but he's an alleged, alleged tweeter. <laughs> um what, what what is this tweet the fuck is this guy's if this doesn't say a lot i don't know what does i mean come on this is pretty fucked up and what does it even mean um you are both hot but presumably underage so let's just say you are both cute it's like do you think that gets you out of the fact that you're legit um fucking uh like a pdf file so i'm not gonna call you hot but i'm gonna actually say that at the same time that i'm thinking it and put it into writing and tweet it so the world can see but you guys are both cute is that really what i just read that was his thought process he did it while typing it and then actually put it out there it's like no bro that's not how it works you don't say what you're thinking there <laughs> Um, and then backtrack it with cute. That's not how it works. I don't know who needs to talk to Corey and have a co quick conversation with him. And in case you're wondering who Todrick Hall is, he also besties with Taylor Swift. Okay. Reddit, Reddit, please put in the Reddit. Next video, I'm going to pull him up. Thank you so much, Supersonic Warrior. You're amazing. Um, this puts a smiley, no shame whatsoever. Yeah. What, what is a smiley face too? Like he, what is that supposed to sound like? He's tee -hee, I'm just an innocent, uh, alleged predator up here. <laughs> like what the fuck is this? I didn't see this until now. This is the first time I'm seeing this, you guys. And I'm definitely, um, this speaks, this, this speaks volumes for me personally. I mean, this is out of control, out of control okay um okay see now you know i wasn't lying you are a beautiful girl how old 17 oh god okay 16 but you were close oh my god amy clark another fellow Corey's angels musician tweeted a picture of herself with a scratch on her arm and wrote thanks at Corey feldman for his nasty scratch you gave me while pushing me into a wall after screaming at me the tweet was later deleted <gasps> apparently Corey feldman likes okay dv women in addition to essaying them never witnessed him hit a woman personally but i always wondered since his wife mysteriously got a fat lip more than once after they had been fighting <gasps> thanks Corey feldman for this nasty scratch you gave me while pushing me into a wall after screaming at me guys this is really out of control look at this angel amy clark this is on another well-publicized incident dating back to 2016, four days before Feldman's Bizarre Today performance, he left a disturbing, angry voice message to former Angel Crystal. Oh, look at the videos removed. Kali, 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 Kali. <laughs> when he found out she was about to leave the so-called band. So this video is obviously unavailable. This one, I'm guessing something got removed. Who knows what happened there? It's very sus. Only days following Mindy Robinson's open editorial, Corey, Corey Feldman was scheduled to be one of the panelists on the town hall meeting organized by the L.A. Committee on SV, a panel that he was made up of several SAG after survivors of SV. As evidence and claims kept piling up against Corey Feldman, the event was abruptly canceled due to the allegations of sexual SM against one of their panelists. Okay, this is understandable. Um, tonight's uh, town hall postponed statement from the LA local committee. Dear members, it is with regret that we must reschedule the town hall meeting to which we've been invited this evening. P part two, it has come to our attention. Hi, Victoria. Makes me sick to my stomach. Keep exposing these predators. <laughs> Victoria, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Victoria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, God, this is just fucking disgusting. I'm like... 
sitting here just pretty, I don't even know what to say right now. Um, as a committee, which includes many survivors of SV, we were each we take each accusation seriously and hold space for every voice. So I'm guessing he got kicked off of this panel, right? An alleged um, panelist. <laughs> Uh, the question of R is very divisive topic, and oftentimes people are drawn into two opposing lines, especially when a high-profile person believed to be championing the cause of R victims is the one accused of the same. Correct. We talked about this earlier. Corey Feldman has used his Twitter handle and a handful of publications to deny every allegation against him, going as far as victim shaming some of the accusers and in a single incident posting... Um, we got that revenge of Jacqueline Von Rudin. This is so fucked up, you guys. It's getting worse. While maintaining that a certain nefar nefarious group he refers to as the Wolf Pack is against the truth he aimed to reveal in his documentary. Oh, it's oh, guys, here we're back. Let's get back. Stay free. We're back at the conspiracy theory. Um, I guess Corey Feldman is another um, tin hat individual um wow this really seems to be the new wave it's the new wave of um of survivors being conspiracy theory like a, a conspiracy theory it's pretty alleged panelist <laughs> i'm glad you caught that anesty um but it seems like conspiracy is really uh the new uh thing it really is um have a problem with it i definitely have a problem with it because it's like okay so wait now when when more uh survivors do come forward they are now part of a conspiracy uh against you stay free it's really uh stay an enabler it's like it's really out of control oh Daniel, thank you. The work you are doing right now is so important. The dedication to accountability is just such an inspiration. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Sometimes I'm like, am I talking into a void? <laughs> you know, um, I do feel that a lot sometimes. Not with you guys, but like, you know, afterwards, I'm like, am I really? Is this doing anything? Um, okay. So thank you. Um, God, Corey Feldman is fucking grossing me out. I cannot believe this individual. And, and, you know, at the same time, I understand he's a survivor. Um, you know, but if he, he is apparently also an alleged predator and, um, this is really, really sickening to, to, to read the, the, this, these stories and to see him just blatantly, uh, uh, allegedly talking to underage girls on Twitter, um, this is problematic and I'm, I'm really saddened that these survivors uh, haven't been platformed um, more than the, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen much, um, not enough, honestly, really not enough about them. And um, hearing this, I can't believe this is on medium.com and how come this isn't, if there's police reports allegedly, et cetera, like where, where, where's the articles in mainstream media? Like where is the guardian when it comes to a, a, a full expose on film? you know, this is, it's, it's doing so much. You have the power to put words to your feelings and I can't. So I thank you for that. Tangerine, thank you. That's kind of you to say. Such an impact. Look at all these survivors and supporters. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. You guys are the best. Seriously. You guys are the best. Makes me feel better, honestly. Um, this weekend was like just an emotional weekend. So I I, I, I really appreciate you guys and um means a lot. Um and then can we go tell Christy Romano to take down this fucking, I'm sorry. Like, you know, don't, obviously I'm not, this is not like drama. This is like, I really want people to understand that like when survivors come to you and tell you, Hey, you know, this is really triggering. I want you to look into my, you know, my story, or I want you to at least see the police reports, or, you know, I want you to make an informed decision before you're just putting this individual on your platform, giving him, you know, a platform, um, and essentially making money off of him. Right. So I want you to be mindful of this individual. You know, we, we want to encourage people, 
Um, oh, thank you guys so much. <laughs> um, you know, we want to encourage people to do the right thing for survivors and understand why it's triggering and why it's re-traumatizing and why it's extremely important to listen to them. And that's what power to survivors is. And, you know, I don't, I'm kind of done with anyone who pretends to, um, you know, uh, advocate for survivors, um, and then doesn't listen to survivors, you know, and doesn't, you guys get it. You guys get it. I'm like, you know, I know I'm like looping here, but it's like, I'm bummed that that she didn't listen to to the to the people reaching out and I'm bummed that she didn't listen to a person like me who has been on her show and she seemed like she did hear me on this and you know and this video is still living on her page. A lot of people called out Chrissy for Todrick and she didn't listen so I'm not going to get my hopes up. Yeah, this is a little bit problematic. I have a problem with this. And um yeah, that's not okay. That's that's not okay. And I, I'm not I'm not supportive necessarily um, of a channel or a platform that is not listening to survivors. And you know, this is where it starts. It listen, you know, it listening, listening at the very least, listening and responding. And you know, leaving somebody on red is, in my opinion, you know, is um. God, I don't want to sound harsh. That's not really what I mean, but it is like a way of um, escaping um, a, a conversation that needs to be had. That conversation needed to be had between um, these alleged, uh, God, these survivors um, with 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 Christy. And, you know, the fact that that conversation wasn't able to be had, I don't know where they're at. I don't know. She never really responded past after that. It's like, I don't know where it's at, but I really don't, don't, don't like that. I don't like that 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 conversation is not being had. I think it's very important to not leave survivors on red when they're coming to you um, and letting you know that you know you know allegedly this person is harming other people. And if you're promoting this individual in a positive light, you know you are complicit in the sense of giving them a platform and putting them in the light that they want to be seen in, right? And that that helps them get access to more victims, more survivors. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Moving on, moving on so we can get through this. Oh, God. Okay, he claims they cooked up this slander against him with the sole intention to tarnish his reputation and stifle his voice as he continues to dodge multiple, what, assassination attempts. Eventually, as the plot unraveled during the filming of My Truth Doc, as we collected evidence, we began to see that all these three women were working in tandem. Tandem? (laughs) <laughs> with the wuss pack and judy herself here is ex-angel jackie's true identity what the fuck is this here jackie hanging with bobby wolf margot lane and corresponding with judy not to imply this whole thing was a setup of um hashtag wow okay working together to discredit and silence me but here is a very clearly laid out this is the girl who claimed i grabbed her butt once okay dude i already saw you literally reaching out to underage girls bro like okay first of all we just saw you reaching out to under for to children so in my opinion i'm just kind of over this at this point you know it's like we saw that we i saw it um tell me that's not real i don't get it can someone tell Corey feldman he doesn't have my consent to post an nude photograph of me on his twitter i had removed the image he put up a screenshot of it's my right to decide how and when i like to share my body stripper or not was it not enough to sa me jezebel sweet parties involved it looks like there's uh is this like a police report Okay, okay, Jezebel. Well, he's like attacking, I guess, these these survivors. Okay, as the last few lines of this article were being written, a longtime friend of Corey Feldman, whose presence didn't go unnoticed at the premiere of my truth documentary. P.S. Ron Jeremy was charged with eight counts of essaying four women in incidents dating back to 2014, including forcible R, forcible P, and F O C. Wow. God, it's like you can't, you can't even say any of it. Um, these allegations are pure lies or buyer's remorse. He called these survivors fucking buyer's remorse. He called these survivors um, stories and their um, alleged trauma um, uh, a buyer's remorse, you guys. That's a new one. Bye, Mariah. Thank you so much for coming. 
He called these survivors' allegations buyer's fucking remorse. Cool, dude. And I also, um, uh, I, I saw your tweet about uh, you trying to be all smooth talking to children, by the way, allegedly. So, uh, yeah, that. If convicted, he faces up to 90 years to life in prison, according to prosecutors. Note, this article was originally published on BuzzFeed and then removed by their editorial staff. The claims made within our allegations, Corey Feldman has yet to be charged with any crimes. Okay. Alrighty. So to just um, take a breather here for everybody, because that was honestly a lot. I don't feel um, good about him. And I am um, concerned, in my opinion. I did not like to see those Twitter, um, those tweets that were in reference to children and him um, fumbling through um, uh, praying on, on, on underage girls. I uh, don't like to see that. And that's a huge red flag for me. And when is it is Jay up in here? Jay. Hey, Jay. I want to know why they removed it too. And, you know, this is why I like to say so many times that, you know, we don't want to give these um, alleged predators any type of financial reward because that financial reward can go towards these uh, very powerful lawyers, very powerful lawyers that are extremely expensive. Um, and that goes towards uh, silencing the survivor stories. Like, for example, apparently I read some BuzzFeed thing with Brian Friedman and Brian Friedman, I think like whatever, allegedly sent like 20 pages um, trying to stop a Diplo article from coming out. And so this is this is how the cover up happens. And that's why it's super important for us not, 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 not to financially reward um, these individuals because when they get into these civil suits, for example, when these survivors are trying to uh, seek justice, get justice, uh, you know, they uh, that can go towards silencing those individuals. And that's what's really fucking scary about this. And now BuzzFeed, it was on BuzzFeed and now it's off of BuzzFeed. And it's like, why? Why hasn't there been any story about this? There's police reports. Is there an investigation happening currently? I'm very curious to see that. Um, I'm, I'm very curious to see that, honestly, and see what see what happens, because this is jarring. This is, um, I, I, I personally, as a human being, stand with the survivors and um, I, I, I give them support in, in, in coming forward and, and, and going up against um, their alleged predator. And I, um, you know, that's that's honestly all I can say right now. I'm honestly just very shocked that there's been really no publication that has dug into this or looked at this or published this. That's deeply concerning. And I and for somebody who thinks this is a big conspiracy theory against him, why is the stories only on Medium and YouTube, bro? <laughs> just saying, bro, if they're really coming after you, like. I don't really see that because the, I, it was very hard for me, honestly, to find these stories. It wasn't an easy um, find. And so that's honestly how I feel about that. So, um, all right, Corey. Uh, if you guys find anything else about Corey, um, please put it into the Reddit. I do want to look further into this because this is very, very, very um, concerning. And I'm very concerned also why there hasn't been enough... Uh, publications discussing this especially when there seems to be a lot of uh his behavior kind of in writing um and a lot of in detail um descriptions of what allegedly happened to these individuals so please keep me posted on that um god i just so grossed out and let, let's see if you know chris chrissy can we get her to read the article and you know, be very kind, obviously, to her. This is, again, not about that. Um, but I do want her to understand um, this is important to listen to survivors. And um, this is not okay. This is really, really not okay. How is everyone, how is everyone feeling? We went a little bit over today, but it was such a, it was such like a, 
That was a monolith of a of an article. Honestly, I I'm I can't believe that that is not spoken about more. I even couldn't even find that many stories about it on YouTube. And then to to have that that article out and easily accessible, and then you see her talking to him on her podcast. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Christian, for every predator, there's more than a dozen higher ups who have covered it up and are actively covering up. That's why these things are never reported at a magnitude they're supposed to. Correct. Exactly. I'm I'm let's 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 please let's please keep our eye on this story um, and uh, give support to the survivors. Um, and please let me know if you hear anything else. What happened? Something's happening over to my left. Um, I hear my children up there. So obviously this is my time to start signing off, but thank you guys for, um, joining this episode and, and hearing the story of these, um, survivors, um, and these, uh, accusations against Corey Feldman and let's hold space for things to be both, um, and, and that this doesn't negate, um, the fact that Corey Feldman is a survivor, but this is definitely something that is not excusable. Um, it's not justifiable in any way, shape or form. And if, you know, if these allegations are true, and so let's show support for the survivors. Let's continue to keep our eyes on these stories. Um, and let's see what Christy Romano, you know, where she stands with this. I just wonder if she read it. It's really important for her to read it and um, not avoid the conversation. I think it's even if we're not, oh, it's uncomfortable to hear about, but it needed to be said. Daniel, thank you so much. And yes, it did. And the thing is, like, I want... um. Um, bystanders to just really understand one thing. You avoiding it is worse. You avoiding it and leaving a survivor on red is worse. You got to, um, you got to take a stand. You got to, you got, you got to, you can't be, there's no neutral on a moving, on a moving train. Okay. So you got to take a stand um, and you got to stay firm in it. Whatever that stance is, you know, you, you, you got to at least, though, acknowledge the survivor. And, and that's super important. It's like, OK, you can make your decision as to if you want to keep the video up or not. Do I really agree with that? No. But what I definitely don't like is um, leaving a survivor on red. Don't leave a survivor on red when that person or the even an ally for the survivor is coming to you on behalf of the survivor to let you know about this person and how the survivor is feeling. Do not leave them on red. Do not. It's damaging. It's extremely damaging for survivors, especially when they're if their statute of limitations is up, et cetera, and they don't have many means um, uh, to get support. Um, please, for the love of God, like just do not leave them on red. Don't do it. Just just let them know how you feel. And it's it's more important for them to understand where you stand than to feel ignored. And survivors have felt ignored so many times reaching out to brands, reaching out to friends, reaching out to fucking family, reaching out to so many different people not to support their predator. The last thing they want to feel is ignored because that's the, it's the worst. So just for the at the very fucking least, don't leave them on red. Listen to what they have to say and then make your decision and um, stay firm in your in your decision. There's nothing we can really do about that, but at least don't leave them unread. Um, and that's just honestly how I feel. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the ride with me through the triggers and the and the, and this horrific stories of uh, around Corey Feldman and um this Thursday I have some very very exciting news to share with everybody. Two actually. I have two things to share with you guys on Thursday. That's huge huge news. Um and I'm going to wait till Thursday to announce it. Um but it's really crazy. And I still can't. I'm like still pinching myself for both things. I'm still pinching myself because I can't believe this is real life. Um, um, but yeah, I got reached out by somebody and um, it's very, very like the sweetest thing ever. And um, I'm excited to share it with you all on Thursday and also go through um, 
one other story that has recently surfaced. I'm going to do a little bit of digging to pull that off and pull, pull that out and then also go through the journey with you guys. I personally like going through the journey with you guys than even kind of really reading everything before because I really enjoy the the discourse and like conversing with you guys about all of this. So thank you so much for everything, for your support. And uh, yeah, feeling voiceless is so painful. And I, and I, I just want Chrissy to know that this is um, it says a lot when you don't say anything. It says a lot when you don't say anything. So let's not do that to survivors. Oh, oh, <laughs> I already disappeared anyways. <laughs> As the camera turns off, I'm already gone. I just poof, I'm out of here. Um, but you guys have a beautiful night and um, take care of yourself. I know there's a lot going on um, and it's important for survivors specifically, like take care of yourself mental health check-in. Um, yeah, just, just take care of yourself during these times. And I, um, we'll see you on Thursday and, um, adore you, adore you guys so much. Bye you guys. Nova, I'm coming. Nova.